let's have a look at two pens for which I re uh, received quite a lot of review requests. I'm going to cover them in one video. The Lamy Safaris, the uh, originals, right? The uh, original Savannah Green and the Terracotta. So in a nutshell, uh, these were the original two colors of the Lamy Safari when it was uh, launched in 1980. Yes, at the Frankfurt Fair. And they became very, very popular. Some would say the most best-selling pens in the world. And others would not say that. But in any case, um, they are popular pens. The Safari model is very collectible and you can get it as a ballpoint and as a roller ball and like a fountain pen and you, all, all kinds of things. So they're very collectible because Lamy wisely keeps coming out with new colors. And this of course is uh, an homage uh, to the original two colors in which the pen was launched, which I think has some, uh, some nice things going for it. So I'm going to have a look at the pens I'm going to do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like about them and what I don't like about them. Let's get started. Okay, the Lamy Safaris. They come in these boxes. They're very simple boxes, and they, um, they have the little cardboard ring when you buy them. That ring is here, so you don't accidentally puncture uh, the cartridge it comes with. You don't get a converter with this pen. That's a separate purchase and uh, they come in this box. I'm not a huge fan of these boxes um, for the very simple reason that yes they're very simple and practical you can just recycle them that is something that I really like but there's absolutely no protection for these pens like they rattle around uh, like crazy but anyway that's just me. Here we have the pens I think if you're watching this channel there's a fairly good probability that you may have held a safari at some point or another but in case you would like a size comparison, here you see the pen next to a Pilot Metropolitan, uh, which is, as you can see, fairly similar in length, a little uh, less girthy in some points, especially when it comes to the cap. Okay, now, are there any ways you can tell apart the old, original uh, Savannah and Terracotta pens from these pens? Answer, yes, you can, because there might be collectors who are like, eh, no, it's relaunch and I'm going to be scammed. I don't know which is which anymore. And I, oh, no, it's going to devalue my pens. Well, um, fortunately, there are some ways you can tell apart the modern versions and the originals. I don't have the originals, but I can uh, show you a few things. Uh, here, at the bottom, in the modern ones, you see Germany. The originals either had West Germany or nothing there, depending on when they were made. Second uh, thing is that the originals uh, cannot take the modern converters and the modern ones cannot take the original converters. So that is a good test should you happen to have a converter at hand. Um, the final thing in my mind that really sets them apart is that this little breather hole in the plus sign, the plus sign just indicates what writing mode it is, right? The ball points and the roller balls, they have different uh, symbols here. One is a minus sign and one is just uh, just nothing, it's just a circle. I forget which is which because I, I always forget. I'm just, I'm not a, a safari collector, sorry. Uh, but there is a little hole in the center here and the original ones did not have that hole. And that's pretty much it. I also had the feeling, but I haven't double checked that, that the originals had the silver colored nibs and these have a black colored nib, but I could be absolutely wrong about that. Whereas I'm fairly certain about the other aspects that I've just mentioned to you. So there is that. Beyond that, these pens are safaris and I've reviewed a lot of safaris. I'm going to take the orange one because I think it has the greatest contrast of the background here. It's a safari. So we can quickly go over some of the aspects. I've already talked about the, the plus sign finial, which indicates this is the fountain pen. You have the clip. The clip is quite nice. Uh, because it's springy and it, it, it works uh, uh, quite well. A uh, nice, simple, uh, austere Bauhaus design, which I like. You have the little ink window, which shows you how much ink is left. In this case, I just popped in the cartridge that came with the pen, so there isn't... I mean, I have written with them, but not that much, so I don't know how well you can see what the, what the difference in ink level is, or how that goes down. Here you have Lamy, because the pen is a Lamy. 
The cap pops off and posts very securely on these pens and they're quite light so I always, these are pens that I kind of like posting. And then you have the section which is according to some God's gift to mankind and according to others the work of the devil because it has these faceted cutouts here for your fingers that really work for some people and for other people they don't. Some people have somewhat smaller hands and it doesn't really work for them. Other people just have a specific angle under which they like to hold their pen and this just this angle in which you are forced to hold the pen doesn't really work for you. And just so you're sure, to be absolutely sure, I have undoubtedly done a, or actually have asked Hamish to do a uh, disassembly line video. You cannot rotate the feed and nib. There are grooves on the inside of the section. You cannot just rotate this because you can put the section into a degree, but it won't go in all the way and it will get stuck there. It's it, You have to put that section in that way. So what I'm trying to say is you cannot compensate for the way you're supposed to hold the pen by rotating the nibs, which you can do on a Parker 75, for example. Okay, then we have the cartridge in this case. It's a simple standard Lamy blue cartridge. You can also use a converter. Again, that is a separate purchase. It, is, it does not come with the pens. But then again, uh, these pens were sent to me by Applebaum uh, and the, uh, the pens sell there for 21 euros and 40 cents. That is without the 21% VAT, but don't, rem don't forget that you can get a 10% discount there. Go to my website, click their banner. Uh, the Apple, Apple Bomb banner, I was going to say Apple Boom, the Apple Bomb banner, you'll get a 10% discount. So especially if you're overseas, you don't pay the 21% VAT and you get the 10% discount. This can become a pretty interesting uh, pen to purchase then. Okay, so we have the Terracotta, we have the Savannah. Uh, because someone is going to ask, I think I prefer the Terracotta. Just a little bit better uh, than the, the Savannah Green, but they're both very nice. The final thing I will say is their texture is nice. Some safaris have a very smooth texture. These pens do not. That definitely is a is a is um, an interesting tactile sensation when you pet these pens. Having said that, let's just do a bit of writing. I'm not going to write with both. Both of these have a steel medium nib, uh, so I'm, 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 not, I'm not going to waste your time by writing with both. This is the Lamy Safari uh, original, but the, I'm just going to write down Terracotta OG, uh, and we have a medium steel nib, and this is just, as I said, Lamy Blue, and that just fits, more or less, when well, we all pretend it does. It's a Safari, and the black coated nibs um, typically have some coating on the tipping as well and it'll wear off. You may already see that there is a tiny bit of silver like light reflected there. That tipping will wear off. Once the, while the tipping is on there, uh, it's typically, the black nibs typically are a little bit less smooth than the silver colored nibs. This is not a Lamy thing, this is something you also see with Faber Castell for example which has black coated nibs. Uh, I'm just saying. So there is a bit more feedback than you might be used to. Because the silver colored broad Lamy Safari nibs, for example, I have found to be very smooth. Uh, there's definitely more feedback here. There we go. Uh, writes well, keeps up well with the ink demand. The, the, their feeds are always interesting. And of course one of the big selling points of these is that you can just take out this nib. Little trick take a bit of scotch tape, put it on the nib, and then it slides off very easily. Um, but you can switch them out, right? These nibs are a couple dollars a piece. So you can have a full lineup from extra fine all the way through broad uh, and, and just have different nibs for your pen, which you can easily exchange out. All right, so it's not a gusher, but it is... Lamy Blue is also a somewhat uh, dry ink, I found. So I wouldn't expect uh, this to be a gusher but it's definitely well tuned. It's a fairly round nib, uh, as it should be. It's not an italic nib, but I mean, as you can see, it is round. As to springiness, yeah, it is a steel nib, I, I, because it's also not a very expensive nib. I have no trouble pushing this a little. I'm not saying that you should either, but you can squeeze out a bit of line variation if that really matters to you. What about reverse writing? For those who like it, surprisingly smooth. 
and then you do go from a nice medium to a good fine. So if that is important to you, then you can actually do that. Okay, I think that is what I wanted to talk about for this particular pen. Let's uh, talk about likes and dislikes. What do I like, what do I not like about the Lamy Safaris? Well, they're Lamy Safaris. Lamy Safaris are collectible, they come in many colors. Uh, I, I like that. They're affordable, right? The, the 21 euros, 40 cents, and again, don't forget the 10% the discount you can get upable through my website, which is clicking the banner. It's a classic pen. It's become a classic pen. It's 40 years old. It still works. The design still works. It's still appealing. Some people hate the section. Yeah, other people don't. That's a, that's a personal matter. They write well. The nibs are interchangeable. You can easily build up a whole armada of nibs for these pens and, and exchange them yourself without any trouble. They're well designed. I find them comfortable. I'm one of the people who likes them. I so I mean I think there's a lot to be said. Like the, the, the design, the ink window, it's it's meant to be a school pen, but it turns out that all kinds of people love it. And I understand why. It's robust, it's ABS plastic, you can drive over this, it'll be fine. It's a solid pen and it's stood the test of time. So what what can you say? Now I don't know exactly how I feel about relaunching the original colors but that's just because i'm not a safari collector i think if you are a safari collector this could be very exciting um so i think i think lamy made, made an interesting choice here and i think that overall that choice has worked really quite well both of them are comfortable writers i found both of them to write nicely um so what can i say it's safari it's a classic and that's pretty much all so a kind thank you to applebaum for sending me these pens I hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.